Hey, everybody. Welcome to the Clusive Podcast. I'm Luke Siminer, CEO and co-founder of Clusive.io, world's first e-learning platform for blind and visually impaired individuals. Uh, got Lance Johnson here from the See Through Podcast. Lance, you want to give us a little intro? What's up, everyone? Uh, I'm Lance, and I host the See Through Podcast. And uh, on my podcast, I interview a lot of people in the blind and visually impaired community. And I also interview other people who are just in the disability community. And, uh, yeah, I just have really fun conversations with people who are uh, changing the game, you know, when it comes to the blind and disability community. Awesome. Awesome. And I, I like to jump right in. What, what inspired you to start your podcast? Cause that's how, that's how we connected. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, Luke, uh, has been on my podcast, so, uh, it's fun to be on the other side and get interviewed. Um, but yeah, I started my podcast for a lot of reasons. Um, and without boring you, I'll try to simplify it. You know, I grew up with a legally blind mom with uh, retinitis pigmentosa. Um, and I have retinitis pigmentosa because I inherited it from her. Um, and so did my sister. Um, so I grew up with, with kind of the knowledge that I'm going to be going blind at some point in my life. Um, but it didn't really affect my vision until my early 20s. And I'm 32 now, and I'm, I'm like on the border of that legally blind like threshold of 20 degrees. Um, so, you know, as, I, as my vision was, uh, you know, getting worse, I had to come to face that reality of vision loss, which I kept putting off and putting off and putting off. It, it caused me a lot of anxiety when I thought about it. And, uh, and whenever I moved to New York City, which is where I live now, I was 27 years old. Um, I had to quit my job to do that. Um, and I wanted to give my employers like a legitimate reason. I didn't want to just be like, I'm peacing out, you know, to New York, you know. Um, and my reasons were I was moving to New York City because I didn't want to drive anymore because my vision had declined so much. And I wanted to use public transit. And then also I work as a video editor and that's my current profession. Um, but at the time I was a video editor and videographer. So I wanted to get rid of the video, uh, Augerfer's part of my job because my vision was declining. I, I knew I didn't have a future in that because, you know, I can't be on set in dark city settings and, and, uh, things like that, you know, so I just kind of called it while I could, you know, so I was like, I can edit, I can, you know, retinitis pigmentosa, um, affects your peripheral vision. Um, and it kind of makes your vision close in from the outside in. So I can see my computer, right? Cause I still have my central vision. So that was just like a smart move on my end. Yeah. So whenever I told my employer, um, that was the first time I had ever been open uh, to my, to any employer. I always just lied in job interviews and whatnot. Um, and, uh, around that time, you know, I, I was very, very nervous to open up and tell people about it. Cause I didn't want to be treated differently and all these other factors. And, uh, um, I just thought it was going to be awkward at the very least it was going to be awkward, you know? And so I told, I told my employer and I felt like a, a huge weight off my back of being open about, you know, having RP, uh, which is short for retinitis pigmentosa. So, um, I, then I, all to take it further, I've made an Instagram video announcing that I'm moving to New York city and why I'm moving. I, I kind of like, uh, I call it, I came out as someone with retinitis pigmentosa and, uh, I got just a lot of love for that. And I felt a huge weight off of me come off of me again. So I kind of wanted to ride that wave. You know, I moved to New York City, I had finally came clean and just kind of was more open about uh, living with retinitis pigmentosa. And uh, I wanted to kind of keep that momentum going. And and I realized that I didn't really know anyone in the, you know, the blindness community. So I thought about, you know, making a documentary where I featured various blind artists because uh, I, you know, I am a filmmaker too. I went to film school and that's my video background, video production and all that. Um, 
But, you know, I, after a while, kind of, I, I, I love podcasting and I thought podcasting would be a, a great way for me to, to, to meet a lot of people, talk to a lot of people, learn straight from the source, from people who are further on, you know, my, uh, vision on the vision loss journey and learn how like they adapt and learn how, you know, how they're crushing life, um, and, and their mentalities. And then I also <clears throat> decided to talk to anyone with disability because it's, it's all the same, you know, in, in terms of mindset, like having an adaptable mindset and kind of overcoming those mental barriers that come with, you know, living with, you know, a disability. But so, yeah, I started my podcast. I figured I'd make use of my technical knowledge of videos and audio. And, and uh, here we are two years later, over two years later, and I'm in the seventies now, my episodes and, yeah. and I've networked with thousands of people and it, it's really cool. That is incredibly cool and incredibly exciting. And like, what's the, what's the metric you measure your podcast by? Like call when you, what do you get happy about when, when you see, like, is there a stat, a KPI? Or... Okay. Yeah. Well, I'd just say growth, you know, and, uh, you know, growth is good. And, and there's two forms of that. There's the actual numbers of like how many plays I get. And then there's also the, just how it empowers me, makes me feel more confident in myself. And, and, uh, from talking to guests who are, you know, they teach me little tips and just ways of thinking and, 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 uh, I grow as someone, I grow more comfortable. So that's one way I grow. But in terms of being happy, like I love when I just post some, some a clip you know online and it it gets you know thousands of views and i can see people commenting and people reach out to me and tell me you know hey your your podcast is really helping me feel more confident in myself and i applied for a job and and i'm taking these extra steps that i never thought and like your your podcast kind of inspired me to do that and it's like that wasn't my intention like to when i started this but i guess that's just the cool kind of side effect and just kind of just a, a additional bonus of having a podcast like this because it's like not only am i learning and and uh growing myself but if you're listening you know th that kind of seeps out and and some of my listeners are growing too so it's cool you no know, that's one of my favorite phrases is you know paying it forward while paying yourself yeah that uh there's an unbelievable amount of power in that but i want to go back I think it's really interesting. I like to uh, take the lessons out of out of things, right? Yeah. I'm new to podcast, and we're still figuring out our format. But in listening to what you what you were talking about, right? I I drive further back even into your choice to go to film school, right? Yeah. And um and then you know how you did that, right? Like knowing knowing that you would face blindness later in life, you choose to go into a, a degree, a career that will require inherently sight to a degree right yeah, yeah. <laughs> i think that, like that's just the brazen level of curiosity that's so important to maintain throughout life right like i'm gonna mm -hmm. do this and if something limits me fine i'll i'll figure that out but that's really badass um and thanks man inspirational uh similarly you know when we look at where you went with it right you you know, you face this barrier and this boundary, and this is just my perception, but when you face this this barrier, like I'm losing my sight, I want to rely on public transportation, I want to build a life that is conducive to me, still yeah. have that curiosity and feeds me, you know, you, you took control of it and you took ownership of it and you kind of got out in front of it. And that's, um, yeah, anything you'd have to say on like that thought process to anybody who's out there that's maybe whether it's a disability or a relationship or anything, right? This, this applies holistically. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, moving to New York was the best move I ever made in my life. It's a literal move of me to a new location, but just life playing chess, the, you know, playing the game of chess of life is probably the best move I ever did. Um, and my career is blown up. You know, I met my wife here. Um, and I don't even think about not driving. Um, so it's cool. You know, and and it's provided me a lot of independence. There's a lot of cons. You know, New York's pretty, pretty New York City's a wild place, um, and uh, but I'm kind of used to it at this point. You know, I'm a I'm like a Southern boy. You know, I'm from North Carolina, so it's a whole it was a huge culture shock. But yeah, you know, um, I made that move selfishly, and I talk about this like 
sometimes you have to be selfish. Everyone wants to think, oh, what's best for everyone? But sometimes what's best for everyone isn't what's best for you. Um, and I was in a position to where it's not like I, I was married and had kids and, you know, all these responsibilities or whatever. It was like, I, I was, you know, my family probably would have been more comfortable with me. You know, my mom would have probably loved it if I stayed in North Carolina <laughs> and my sister and brother, but it's, it's, you know, I had to make that call my, on my own and, and I took a risk. And so it's being selfish and taking risk. You know, I think a lot of people try to, you know, they really look outwardly as a, you know, a job that maybe is not serving them the way they, th it should be, or, you know, they, they, they sign a mortgage too early or, you know, they get married too young. I mean, I'm, I'm not talking on anyone how to, to live their life or whatever but a lot of people make decisions and then it's almost like and this sounds dramatic but they they build their own prison and then mm -hmm. they're they're kind of stuck in it and then they blame blame other people for it um and i choose to be like a almost like a life designer kind of thing it's like all right what kind of life do i want to have you know so you know i analyzed my situation and new york city made the right was the right fit for me. It was just a smart move. Like I, I would have been silly not to move to New York City. If I stayed in North Carolina, um, I would have been a lot unhappier in, in almost every aspect of my life. But, and all I, and all I, but I didn't know that when I moved, I just thought that was going to happen to me. And, and luckily it did. I don't, so, I mean, a lot, I don't know if I'm answering your question right, but it's, it, it comes down to being a little bit selfish, honestly. No, and I think that takes us to a super cool route. Like some of my personal philosophy, right, is yeah, I'm now the CEO of a company that has yeah. six, 14, 16, um, I don't know how many. We've got, a, a, if you count contractors, we're, we're up there, right? A lot yeah. Of employees and a lot of people and a lot of partners. Um, and with that, each, each employee has a support system of some accord, right? Yeah. And, um, and so people would call me a leader. And like Luke two years ago, you know, didn't have any inkling of, an, of a clue how to do that. Right. And now yeah. I'm pretty good at it. And I'd hope most of my team would agree with that. <laughs> saying that, but, um, dropping a poll in the quiz below, <laughs> <laughs> you know, the, uh, my thing is people forget that they are the CEO of their own lives. Right. And I think people also have this weird, I don't know if it's tied to religion or if it's tied to a book we all read at some point. Right. Mandela effect somewhere perhaps <laughs> but yeah uh, people think selfishness is like evil and yeah the truth is that they they're thinking about it wrongly right uh, in the military we have this thing right the highest ranking person eats last mm -hmm. you know a lot of people think it's because the the ground fighters need to eat first you take care of your troops that's being a leader and that that is part of the equation but the truth is it's because it was the highest ranking person's job to make sure there was enough damn food yeah. Right? So that is leading selfishly. No, they don't eat first. And you as a CEO and as a leader won't eat first. When you moved to New York, you weren't rich and comfortable. You were probably scared, worried, and full of anxiety. Yeah. I had four roommates. <laughs> <laughs> That's anxiety in and of itself. And, you know, so, but what were you doing as a CEO of your life? You're like, well, the long term outcome of this is favorable. And yeah. I get through this. And so, you know, in this analogy, you have to be hungry and wait in line. You won't be the first to eat. But if you did your job right, there's enough food. And um, I don't know. I, I think that a lot of people forget that. Uh, as a, a guy running a company, I have to be selfish with my time, right? Yeah. I have to make sure that I, if something's on fire, that's great. It's going to be on fire until tomorrow morning because I need to go to the gym. Because if I don't go to the gym... I'm not going to have like my dopamine. I'm not going to have my serotonin. I'm not going to sleep. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to feel good about myself. And that's going to affect the decisions I make tomorrow. Oh, you have compact for enough days in a row. Well, by day six, you're making horrible decisions. Oh, yeah. And, and your job as a leader is to make those decisions. And so uh, boil that down to any walk of life. Um, the other place I want to go with that too is like you mentioned something uh, – Regarding, you know, a lot of people build their own prisons. Mm -hmm. And 
I, I use a different framing, but I agree completely. I call it, you can either be reactive or proactive in life, right? Yeah. You can either find yourself in this like thing that you painted yourself into, um, or you can carve actively the life you want for yourself. And I don't think either one of them is, is fatal, right? Mm -hmm. If you've been reactive to life up to the point where you heard this podcast where Lance and I inspired you, one, write us an email, two, uh, it can, you can still be, you can still be proactive. You can say, well, what do I want next year to look like? Yeah. You know, that's, uh, I think that's an exciting concept for a lot of folks. Well, yeah, it's like anxiety is, is your brain trying to protect you from the, from the future. You know, it, that's all it is really. So if you're, if you're like having a lot of anxiety about the future, that's because you know, it's just trying to problem solve for the future. So, you know, you can numb that anxiety by just putting it off things or self-medicating or just telling yourself an excuse. You know, it's, you know, I can't, I can't move to, to wherever because of X, Y, and Z or, you know, and, um, and at the end of the day, you got to kind of, you got to, it takes work, hard work, and you got to, you got to kind of get a, have an overview of what kind of life you want to have. And then you got to make a game plan of how you can live that life. Like it's, it's not whatever life that you want to have is not just going to happen. Yeah. <laughs> it doesn't just fall into place like that. No. Yeah. There's a, one of my favorite books and perhaps the most impactful book I ever read was Think and Grow Rich and by Napoleon Hill. It's a really interesting book. Okay. Couldn't recommend it more to anybody, but the, uh, Boil down this amazing, it's almost a, a sacred text, right, to me. Um, but boil it down, and one of the end statements is, you know, say what you want to have in this life, and then say what you will do to have it, right? And, yeah. like, it's a it's a true equation. Do you, do you ever feel like the, um, get a little spooky, hippy-dippy? Yeah. You ever feel like you can problem-solve with your subconscious? Like, you can feed your brain a problem or a thought? Yeah. Yeah, definitely. And like maybe it's a week later, you'll be on a treadmill, you'll be doing something, uh -huh. making an egg. And you're like, it happens to me all the time. Ah, you know. I, and I, sometimes I, I, I intentionally um, quit actively trying to figure something out. Mm -hmm. And I just, all right, pause on this. It'll come to me. And then I, I kind of wait for it. To, and it usually it's like in the shower or I'm out walking my dog or something like that. And then I'll just have this idea pop into my head. And then I'll write it in my phone and then I'll write more detailed notes on my computer. And then it, it usually turns into something. And, you know, and I'm always thinking of ways to grow, you know, my podcast, my career, you know, <laughs> my bank account, you know, you know, get better shape or whatever. It's, it's, I'm always thinking about that. And it's kind of like a blessing and a curse because I, I feel like I am one of those people that live in the future. I'm always thinking about the future and I'm, I'm, I'm trying to live more in the present and be in the moment, but I, it's hard, it's hard for me because I'm always just like thinking really far ahead. But, um, but yeah, I know what you mean. I, I'll, I'll pause on something knowing that it'll come to me later. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I've had this thing where, as you put it, uh, intentionally feeding your brain something to do with calculus on, right? Like I'm not that yeah. good. And some math. In fact, I cheated through college algebra. Miss Winters, if you're listening, I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, that's the only way I got to be, right? And your boy needed to go to nursing school at that time. So, <laughs> but that, yeah. I'm terrible at math, man. Same. <laughs> Same. <laughs> and, um, you know, but when it comes to these life problems, passing it off to your subconscious intentionally and being like, hey, I'm, a, I'm you know, let's solve this, right? And it sounds corny, but it's it's powerful. And it in the I relate a lot to to what you said about the future, living in the future. Yeah, I uh, I learned a cheat code though. I'll share with you, please. <laughs> so, well, this is when I still had like I had no money. It was I quit my engineering job and was like essentially living off ramen and, and paying, paying my house note uh, to try to build up Clusive when it was just an idea. And yeah. I told myself, I really had gotten into reading, and I was like, if you read every morning for six months, every morning, 30 minutes or more, you can buy yourself a reading chair, right? You can you can justify spending that money to buy 
There's like a green leather chair I wanted from Pottery Barn. Yeah. I've never seen a green leather chair. How badass. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, so every day for six months, I read and I eventually got that chair. Now, what happened was, you know, I started reading in that chair. And then I'd feel this gut-wrenching compulsion. If I woke up late and I didn't read that morning, I was going to find myself in that chair to read. Yeah. It's the funniest thing. I still read every morning. Uh, I now wake up earlier so I can read for close to an hour every day. Um, it's just become one of my, like, it's my the gym for my brain. But where I'm going with this is that that chair now, if I go sit in it to talk to my girlfriend, right, she's doing something, whatever, I go sit in that chair. If I find myself on that chair, I find myself reading. Okay. And I'm not, like, reading's a discipline for me. Don't get me wrong. I don't get jazzed about, like, oh, I'm going to open a book. Like, no, it's, it's, a, it's going to the gym. It's a discipline. Yeah. Um, but that chair is now associated with it. And I've gone to this place in Texas called Fredericksburg. It's, like, an hour and a half north of Austin, um, or... Eh, not so much north as much as it is west, but regardless, it's wine country. Okay. You go out there, and to me, that's where things slow down. And I think, just like the chair, I built up an association, hey, this place is not for work. This place is for, like, building me, building my relationship, building my thoughts. Yeah. And I've gone out there with my girlfriend. I've gone out there with my COO. And, like, the talks you have and the, the space you have, right? And so I, my, my cheat code for this is be disciplined about a place or a thing, right? Oh, yeah. Maybe even a talking stick. Like, it's New York, right? So maybe you can't, like, go escape every weekend. So. No. But yeah. maybe it's a coffee shop. Maybe it's a quaint place. And it's like, when you're disciplined and intentional about what you do there, you do it, like, three times. And then you're, now when you go... That's your spot. That's your yeah. Spot. I like that. You know, it kind of is like that classic, like work hard, play hard. But like some people interpret that play hard as being like as like partying. You know, um, I'm <laughs> yeah, yeah. But you now it's like the older I get, the more I just want like quiet, peace and quiet. And uh, yeah, but it, it, I know what you mean. It's like I'll have a busy week, but I'll I'll put something on the calendar, like a date night for like me and my wife, and and I'm like. I, it's like it's like okay I can I can do all this work that I have scheduled because I have something to look forward to and then you know or I'll I'll go visit my mom in North Carolina or I'll go upstate New York like you said and, and then in those moments I I try to to barely be on my phone I try to not I don't even bring my computer with me and I it's it's just like a recharging. And uh, New York has this, you know, you know, you mentioned Austin and going to a particular space. Like New York has this crazy energy to it that is so fast paced mm -hmm. that subconsciously, even if you don't, you're not even aware of it, you're, you're on a whole nother, in a whole different world almost. So I almost need to separate myself from it sometimes because sometimes I'll get so lost in the, the fast pace that I'm not even thinking clearly. I'm just looking at, I need to do this, 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 but I'm not asking myself, why am I doing it? Yeah. And and when I go to these places to recharge, that's usually why I do it. I, I go to figure out the whys of why I'm doing everything here in New York, because here you don't have time to stop and think about it, you know? And uh, you gotta ask yourself sometimes, you, it's okay to be busy, you know, hard work pays off and all that, but you also, you know, gotta work smart too and sometimes you got to stop and think all right why am i doing this <laughs> yeah. oh yeah and it i mean i think that all plays into like people forget that like your brain has a diet too right like what do you yeah. do the thing right and it's you know i find myself in a weird spot with uh like startup founders right there's a lot of founders who like it's all material it's every single ounce of what's driving them is material. They want a super badass car, right? Yeah. And um, they want a house. They want a thing. They want a whatever. And it's like I've had this level of like increasing um, monetary success, right? I went from growing up in incredibly impoverished, single mom, sex yeah. housing, to, you know, I bought my first new vehicle. When I bought my first new vehicle, sure, it made me feel good. Yeah. Uh, and it kind of changes the way you see yourself. I believe in the power of that. Oh, yeah. But it also, like, 
doesn't make anything else go away. Now you're just, now you're just the same asshole, but you've got a nice, you know, it's like, yeah. like, what else are you working on? When I got my house, well, now I'm an asshole with a mortgage now. <laughs> yeah. I relate to that because it's like your identity is, you know, I talked about being from North Carolina and it's like, a it's a completely different, you know, culture and all that. And you can, so when, so yeah, exactly. So now like I find myself sometimes having an identity crisis with, you know, the, my childhood self. And I think everyone has that where they, am I who I thought I'd be type of thing, but mm -hmm. to take it even further, it's like, all right, New York version versus the North Carolina version. And then, and then I have the retinitis pigmentosa losing, going blind versus the sighted guy I was, you know, growing up, you know, and it, it's just, I find myself having this like in the middle of these three kind of identities and it can be a pretty confusing place um and i so i know what you mean by that you know because it's like i but i'm i wouldn't change any of the things i'm doing right now like i wouldn't go backwards and ch change anything but and it's like i i have fun doing all what i'm doing but sometimes it's like you when you're moving so fast sometimes you're you're like you got like going back to my point of stopping and thinking you gotta check like, what eating your new goals yeah yeah, and it's like you got your your new truck, you got your house, you got a mortgage. It's okay. What you should do is take a moment, and I try to do this, and be you know grateful for it, and and, and kind of be in that moment. You know, don't don't look loop it in with all your thousands of tasks you got going on. You know, all right, this is a big moment for me. You know, the younger version of myself would be stoked right now. Yeah, and kind of reflect and celebrate. Don't celebrate too long, you know, <laughs> but, and it, but back at it the next day, but you do got to take those moments when you, when you have a win, you know, when you have a big win like that, it's nice to reflect and it's nice to kind of just slow down and appreciate it. And I, so I got to force myself to do that sometimes. I'm sure you do too. Oh yeah. And it's, and the, my point is that these founders and I'm sure the same thing happens in New York, you get in these ecosystem, these bubbles of, of humans that are all driving towards a somewhat similar thing, right? Yeah. Building a business, launching a podcast, getting marketing fame, whatever it may mm -hmm. be. And it's like, well, what's actually driving my goals? What's feeding them, right? Yeah. And that was my, that was honestly, I've had two big identity crises in, since the founding of Clusu. Yeah. First one was like um, realizing that I was, uh, how do I even word that? That was an interesting one. It, the first one was not not as big of a deal, but it was very much just about, you know, as you said, my childhood versus me now versus mm -hmm. me army, and like, I'm becoming this person. I'm growing so quick, but I feel like I don't even know myself because I've yeah. quickly, I've had to adapt to these these things. Uh -huh. the second one was one that I could never complain about, and that was the weird one. And the weird one was, you know, when you first start a startup, you're you're a founder, right? Which to me, yeah. the difference founder and CEO is, um, to most people, it's just words, but as a founder, it's all heart, right? Like there's nothing but yeah. your brain and your heart and whatever, you know, 16 inches or whatever it may be between those two things. And, um, as you transition, you raise like more money, right? And you, yeah. you become either not the majority owner of a company or you become, you know, you have investors or you have other people on the table or a board that you need to, you know, handle. And it's no longer just heart. You're now turning from this kid with a bright-eyed idea into an, a, an adult. <laughs> yeah. That is responsible for, for millions of dollars in this, like, um, and handling this appropriately, right? Like, you're mm -hmm. not things with the SEC and the IRS, and you're <laughs> it's like, like, holy shit, man, I cheated through math. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's like, in one sense, it's like, I'm losing, you feel like you're losing your baby, but you're also like, what's the next piece of me, right? Mm -hmm. And um, that's probably a weird one to talk about, at least in this setting, but uh, identity crises are fun, if handled well. <laughs> yeah, they are fun, and I'm the sure. On the back side. <laughs> yeah, and and it sounds like, you know, the, probably the more employees you, you take on, the more you have to kind of, you kind of outsource certain tasks that you were probably doing on day one, now you, you're not doing anymore. 
and you you kind of got to be okay with letting someone else do it yeah and I, and i'm a one man team with the see through podcast and for now for now yeah but it's it's again another blessing and a curse it's like that's another reason why i started the podcast i have all the talents i know photoshop i know adobe premiere after effects adobe audition all these pieces of software i use to make all my content and episodes i know how to get clean audio and video um and i'm able to do everything myself but that's a lot of work you know on top of my full-time work as a video editor i'm working for viacom and making you know youtube videos for tv shows like like the challenge jersey shore and, and things like that and then i'm also cutting you know social media clips for com comedy podcast called flagrant and it, it's it's like i stay busy and and my podcast doesn't really make me any money really to be honest with you um it's it's probably a a, a break even yeah. type thing but you know obviously i want it to go somewhere where i make money that's not the intent of it but obviously if i'm do putting all this hard work into it no one wants to work hard for for free so um but I got to do all that on top of my having, you know, date nights with my wife, walking my dog, trying to stay in shape, eat healthy, call my mom, call my brother, keep up with friends. And uh, I would love to have some of my work outsourced. But at the same time, I'm like, I also feel so comfortable because I know I'm in charge of everything. I know it's going to be done right and correctly. So I, that's going to be something interesting for me whenever if, if the C2 podcast grows and I have to, you know, work with other people it's going to be hard for me too i'm kind of like a control freak when it comes to the creative side of of what i do it is it it's very interesting right and yeah the um one i believe the c3 podcast will grow significantly i, I think what you're doing thank you it's awesome and i think the way the, the skills you have are just incredible but when it comes to like the hiring and outsourcing it, it's super interesting because the first few yeah right, you're like Okay, wow, man, this is this is intense, you know. And you kind of do your best to restrain yourself. Like I hired you to do this. You're doing a great job. Maybe I had to put a period here instead of there, for example, right? Yeah. But you get it. Yeah. But what ends up happening is when you hire the right way. And if anybody ever asked me to write that down, I'd say tough luck because I I don't know what it is. We've compiled a great team, and a lot of it yeah. is going off of. You know, me and my co-founders gut instinct on people. But um, when you find someone great at what they're doing and you hire the right way, you end up seeing that uh, it just produces more. Maybe it's not the exact way you would have done it, but it produces so much more than you ever could have. And, and then it scales and then you have confidence. Mm -hmm. And now the, the thing that I start to rejoice in is like, man, I'm building a growing company and running it really well. Yeah. So have like, if I want to take off at three today, I, I actually could. Yeah. We, actually, we had a funny celebration. <laughs> My co-founder took our first lunch. Oh yeah? Yeah. We took our marketing director to a, uh, to a place called Papado, a seafood joint here for lunch. And we took like an hour and a half and we just enjoyed yeah. it. And we're like, to most people, that's like such a, what the hell is this dude talking? Like that's, it's lunch. Yeah, you know, that is the first time we've sat down for an actual lunch together during a work day. It's like it's inhaling something. <laughs> yeah, that's a win. You know, that's one of those wins that I'm talking about where you probably stop and you want to kind of be like, "All right," you know. Yeah. Oh no, we took it. We, <laughs> we were like, we talked about it for a few days following. We we're like, "That was incredible." <laughs> <laughs> but uh, on the on the podcast note here, I keep us. I'll keep us. Uh, lined up, I guess. I want to know, so we talked about like where the ideation came from, how you started it. Now the question is, next little few minutes, I want to know where where you want it to go, what your plans are, if you, if you can reveal any any of the secrets. Yeah, where, where I plan to take everything with the podcast. Yeah. yeah, so again, I've worked, you know, in marketing for over a decade. Um, I, when I graduated college, I worked on film sets and decided I wanted to have more creative control. So then I became videographer editor for a small ad agency. And then, you know, then I worked at several other small ad agencies. And then I worked for an in-house video production team for a software company called Red Hat. 
And then now I'm freelance here in New York. Um, and I've been a freelance video editor where I'd go into some of the biggest, you know, ad agencies, you know, that exist. And I'd go in and I'd edit for a week and then on to the next one, you know. Yeah. Um, so my point is I've, I have a lot of marketing experience. Um, and with that, you know, I'm analyzing, you know, the, the environment that's going on right now. And, um, I'm going all in on YouTube. I like the idea of, of independent creators kind of owning and being able to kind of forge their own path and not have to rely on distributors and, uh, having people tell me what to do. It's like, I'm so used to that with my paid work that the C2 podcast is like the reason why I love it so much, I think is partially because there's no one telling me remove this part, remove this part or change this or whatever. It's my creation. I can do whatever I want with it. Yeah. So I'm, I, I want to stay independent. I don't want any affiliations or whatever. Um, I'd love to, um, have sponsors. I'd love to have, you know, some, some paid sponsors, bring some income in. I'm, I'm going to be releasing merch here soon. Um, which will be another way I'm on Patreon. That's another way you can support the podcast and help it grow. Uh, you get bonus episodes and content there. Um, I want to get into the world of public speaking and talking about, uh, creating, being creative and podcasting and, and video editing, you know, and vision with vision loss. And, um, but yeah, so I'm thinking of taking the podcast and it, it, and making it bigger than that, you know. So, the See Through podcast will, will is going to be underneath See Through. So, See Through is going to be like my umbrella, and then I'm going to have the See Through podcast. I'm going to have vlogs, you know, standalone content. But it's going to be like a brand. I'm, I'm treating See Through as like a brand, and the podcast is just one of those things. Um, that's like my way of having long form content. Well, yeah, I just, I'm just trying to set myself up foundationally to be able to scale for growth, you know, um, and I'm learning as I go because it's essentially it's like see-through is almost like my little business I'm running, you know, and uh, I almost treat it like a business owner would, even though I have no experience in business, but it's like, um, just trying to adapt as I go, but yeah, I'm just trying to set up my foundation. So if, if a massive growth happens, I'm ready for it, you know? And that's my goal is to have, have a lot of growth, a lot of subscribers, a lot of listeners, you know, and I really want to, uh, do this thing for real. Like I'm not like joking around, like a lot of people, you know, do it as a hobby and that's great. It started for a hobby for me, but it's so much work goes into this that, um, and I, I love it so much. I, it like, I, I wake up like, it, like when I wake up. I'm like excited to think about what I'm going to do and, and what I'm going to work on. And, and I've never really had that before, to be honest with you. So it's like, and, 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 you know, that's just me. So some people are not going to understand that or whatever, but you know, whatever I'm on, I'm a one man team and I'm, I'm, I'm going for it all, man. So that's uh, where I plan to take it. I absolutely love that. I, you can hear it in someone's voice when they found something worth fighting for. And yeah. that is uh, just incredible. And there's a few places that connect offline about, but I, I um, you know, public speaking, I think that's all about reps, right? Yeah. You know, it's all just about getting the reps in. And there's definitely some really cool audiences I'd love to tie you into. Okay. I'd love to hear you spa- speak about uh, Spock. Speak <laughs> combination there. Hit it with the remix. Um. I would love to hear you speak about podcasting and blind entrepreneurship. And, yeah. you know, it, that's something that I speak about. You know, I told a crowd of 130 blind and low vision people in, in South Carolina a few weeks back. And I'm going to do it again here in Florida, Virginia, and Nevada, and California in the coming months about, yeah. you know, just the entrepreneurial journey. It's not, it's not marketing preclusive. It's, you know, you want to talk about venture capital? Here's the ups and downs. Here's how it works. Here's what you yeah. You know, here's how you build your signals, so on and so forth. And, you know, what were the transitions, the decisions, the blah, blah, blah. And people love that because for the blind community, right, people have been, they're just kept away. They're kept yeah. away in their own their own workspaces, uh, in their own groups. And it, 
it's almost uh, it's astonishing in a bad way. Astonishing how bad um, it is that society has no clue how many blind and low vision individuals there are in America. Yeah, and it's like it's almost assumed that it's a capabilities issue because you never see them. And so, yeah. when you go and speak to those crowds, the absorption rate is ten out of ten. Right? Like I, yeah, I bet. Yeah. I spoke at my community college um, that I that I went to first. They had me back to do a speaking event, and I was honored as a keynote event. And people listen, right? But like, the action that would be taken from what I what I was talking about was probably yeah. Who knows? The action taken from those kind of events, like miraculous. We could also we could create a occlusive and see through uh, course. You could put a course all inclusive. About how to how to make your podcast? Yeah, I could, you know, and you know, I do everything myself, so I, I could easily help people start a podcast and things like that. And going back to audience, it's like talking about people not knowing. And that's another reason why I want to take this thing, you know, as far as possible because I don't want to just talk to people who have visual impairments who are just yeah. who are you know like. Why? Why would I just want to talk to that audience? I want to talk, reach everyone. And then, and it's like, because it's interesting and, and I, you know, and a lot of people think just having a visual impairment or a disability like instantly makes them interesting. And I don't necessarily agree with that. You know, you still got to have something going on. I mean, that sounds bad, but you, you it just <laughs> does, it doesn't just automatically make you interesting. But, and that sounds bad, but, you know, it, it's like, I'm trying to honestly, like from an entertainment sense, I would love it. Like, you know, we had like, for example, there's a huge creator, Molly Burke. If you're a part of the blindness community, you know who she is. She went on the daily show with Trevor Noah and it like blew everyone's mind. Everyone was like so stoked, including myself. I was excited, but I was like, it made me realize I was like, wait a second. Like that seems so big. But it's just a one fleeting moment. And it's like, why can't someone on TV who's a host be blind? You know? And then everyone, and then people are getting excited about the, the guest that the blind person brings on versus the blind guest that comes on. You know, it's like, what, like, and, and that, if you can reach that large of an audience, then you really are changing, you know, the, the, uh, how people view blindness and, and disability. And I think, and I think that's where I want to take it. You know, I mean, I sound a little bit cocky and I sound, uh, whatever, but I mean, I, I just don't see any other way, you know, we need like, and uh, essentially there needs to be like an A-lister and I'm not saying it's me, by the way, I'd like to be for me it to be me, but like, I think there needs to be like an A-list, you know, entertainment kind of status you know of a person who has a who has who has who lives with blindness no i i couldn't agree more and i i think that the the blind entertainment sector is lacking and i think there's a big open market for it too yes it's part of something that we hope to do inclusive is you know and, and to dial this down even to tech terms right like yeah you know, like the shit that's on the app store right in both ios and in google play there are apps for everything, right? You can, you can time your, your period. Uh, you can, you know, check the weather in countries that you'll never go to and have never been. Yeah. Uh, you know, there's shit for anything and everything between, right? Yeah. But let's talk about audio games. No one's... No one. Yeah. Like, not on iOS. There, there's weird ones that you have to download through like a, a virtual machine and like, I don't know, it's just asking for viruses, right? <laughs> <laughs> there's a whole lot of like the the audio games that are out there they haven't been well financed they haven't been produced but no one has monetized no one has like created this entertainment sector yeah and i think that um i couldn't agree with you more that in all facets um there needs to be more than just a fleeting moment yeah i want it to be mainstream is i guess the most simplistic way to put it it needs to be i love for you know some some massive personality who ha who who is living with blindness and just not only just not just has blind listeners or then like basically everyone you know what i mean 
Oh yeah, well, I our first podcast episode with with a guy named Israel. He, he's a hoot. <laughs> I think he. I think we could drop his name into the running. It would be. He'd be a pretty fired up uh, show host. I think. Yeah. 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 Um, and that's the thing is you know opening the conduits and even us just talking about this right now, right? That's going to put it out there. Someone's going to hear this hopefully, and they're going to take steps towards it. And you and I are going to take steps towards it, and it'll. Yeah. That's it's funny. We'll see where this gets us in five, ten years, huh? Yeah, we'll see. You know, this is gonna be recorded. This is we'll we'll come back to this in five years. You know, maybe this will be part of some some uh the the rise and fall of something or it'll be the uh, the, the the part some documentary or it'll be a part of uh you know, before they were blah blah blah, you know. <laughs> So who knows, but, and, and it's, it's me taking a risk, you know, you taking a risk, being a little bit selfish, you know, going back to what I said in the beginning, it's like, you know, selfishly if, if, and, and that, that's kind of how I see it. It's like, and I, I, if I don't make an episode, there is no episode. If I don't make the content, there is no content. Yeah. And, and that's how it is. So if there's no one in that seat that you want to see, be the person in the seat, make the seat. And, and you know what I mean? It's like tweeting about it's not going to just magically make it create, you know, like it's not just going to come to. Are people actually know. on Twitter? I thought that was just bots. I was <laughs> Good point. Yeah. But yeah, I just, I just, uh, that's kind of my approach. It's like, all right, well. You know, I, I'm trying not to limit my scope. I'm trying to be as big as possible. I don't want any ceiling on anything I'm doing. I'm not limiting myself to any audience. I have a niche audience. I have a, a niche podcast, but I'm not limiting the scope of that podcast. Yeah. No, I think there's, <clears throat> I think that audience is big and community is critical. And I think yeah. that, that your community can be your audience, but your audience shouldn't be limited to your community. Exactly. <laughs> you know, and I think that that's, uh, when it comes to business and podcasts, I, I can't speak to the podcast part because we're figuring it out now. But yeah, the the business side of things is you know our audience is huge, right? We we're going to mm-hmm. send to vocational rehab agencies, federal agencies across the world, right? We're working on something in Germany and Canada, right? Wow, um, <clears throat> but that's not our community. Our community yeah. is, uh, you know, the blind and low vision population here in America, even you know. Boil that down even further, those trying to get jobs, those that yeah. are coming out of school and confused on what's next and they need training. Um, and so getting that community buy-in has allowed us to expand our audience. And that's, yeah, uh, I think, a critical step that sometimes people try to skip. They're like, I need to be huge before I worry about the small guys. And it's like, no, get the yeah. corner, you know? Yeah, I, no, I love that too. And, and to be going, I want to bring up a point real fast, like, about what you're doing with Clusive, you know, it it's amazing because you know you don't have a visual impairment, you know, and but you're you're but what you're building and creating is going to change so many lives to where it's and and it, my I guess what I'm trying to say is you don't have to have something to do something, you know what I mean? Like in terms of being selfish. For example, I'm not considered legally blind. I've 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 struggled a lot when, from starting this podcast with feeling like who am I to be a voice about retinitis pigmentosa? You know, there's plenty of people who are way further on this um, vision loss journey than me. You know, who have you know uh, th- cut three degrees of vision. Like my mom has like three less than five degrees of vision left. And it's like, all right, well, since, you know, I can still see, you know, I don't even use a cane yet. Who am I to talk about this and be a voice? And I'm kind of done with doing that because it's like, like going back to my point, if I don't make the episode, there is no episode. Yeah. And, and this whole like gatekeeping thing of being, feeling blind enough, feeling two sided or whatever. It's just like, there's a, it's, it's, I think people don't care about it as much as people think. And I think as long as you're ch- making change for good and like you're changing the game, like what you're doing with Clusive, 
And like what I'm trying to do, it's like I had this skill set to a video editing and audio production, and I'm able to make all these things. Yeah. So just because I'm not blind enough, I could say, uh, or or could perceive myself as not blind enough. I could say, you know what, I'm, it's not my place, and uh, somebody else. But then nothing would have got, nothing would have got made. Those people who reached out to me, who said that I inspired them to do this and that, or my guest story inspired them to do it, they wouldn't have heard those stories. They wouldn't have seen these videos. They wouldn't. And and it's just sometimes you got to be a little selfish and think about you know all right well how how can I help myself and in the process help tons of other people in the process and and it's it goes beyond feeling like you know like you probably had identity crisis with with do i am i a ceo am i a, am i am i a, you know what you know what i mean so it's just like well well the certain well why i get the respect if i'm not visually impaired but i'm the ceo of a company called inclusive that helps people with visual impairments or i don't know if you've had thoughts like that but oh it, man it happens though in the beginning i was so worried i was like man I hope this is received well because I'm risking my whole life on it. And yeah. I didn't know if the blind and low vision community would, would support me. I didn't. Uh -huh. I, I had no way of knowing. I had a few people that were like, yeah, you know, because you're building it with us. And I'm like, I'm not just building it with you. I'm building it with you and for you. And yeah. That's where the, I proudly say I built for Ooh. and by. And I like that. I'm going to steal that with you and for you. You know, that's kind of what I'm doing. Yeah. And it, uh, I mean, it's ended up working out. I definitely got vetted. I definitely got checked. I met with presidents of all the blind organizations. I've met with uh, leaders, lobbyists, you name it. Yeah. And, um, I, they vet you to make sure you're in it for the right reasons, right? Yeah. And um, as, as they should. Yeah. But it's, it, I couldn't agree more with what you said, man. It. Don't wait is my point. Don't wait till you feel like it's, people will perceive it as, yeah, it's okay for you to, you're now at the place where you can do X, Y, and Z. If you want to do X, Y, Z, just do it. Do it. Fight the fight. And I think the only thing I'd add to that is like, it always takes one. Right. Yeah. And especially in this community, I, I said this in our last podcast, but um, I'm thoroughly convinced I've now interacted at the the highest of highs for fortune 100 companies in America for, yeah. You know, establishing uh, job pipelines, training opportunities for our graduates. I've also met with vocational rehab agencies in 22 out of 50 states. And wow. what my conviction is, is that it will take a generation of blind warriors. Nothing less will do. And what these, why they have to be warriors, right, is mm -hmm. because they themselves, just like any other civil rights movement, are going to bear the brunt of the questions and the awkwardness and um, mm. some places probably even the contempt of yeah. coworkers, bosses, biases, you name it. Um, but this generation of blind warriors is going to have to go into these workplaces and prove, prove themselves. Yeah. They shouldn't have to prove themselves. Right. But true. No less. That is how this will work. Um, and I think that, uh, this is the right time for it. I think we have that generation. I think the people listening to this are that that generation that's so. I think so too and that there's a big ship and you know I think you know how my my mom's generation perceived blindness and it's just w really different you know we got TikTok you got Instagram you got social media all these places with these massive communities where everyone's you know you hashtag blind talk and you can just go see like post after post after post after post and it's people sharing tips sharing this and that and like my mom didn't have that as a teenager I didn't have that and and that's also going back to that first question you asked why do it uh, my podcast would have helped younger Lance so much when I was younger you know I, I would have loved to hear these conversations and like oh it's oh you can still have a cool career and have a fun life and uh, get married and you're still making jokes you're still you know yourself you, it's like it's not like if you if my younger self would imagine listening to something it would have been like, something like this it would have been like i just sit in my room all day in the dark and 
stare at the ceiling, but I can't see much of the ceiling. You know, it's 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 like that's what I imagined. I imagine just doom and gloom and and just like you know, and and it, it's just really nice to to have that uh basically reality check in a good way. It's like, oh, it's not doom and gloom. It's 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 what you make it, you know, and and you know, it just solves a lot of those the stigma around it because you know that's just what you think about. You know, a lot of people's worst fear is going blind. You know, so it definitely is. And I, uh, I don't know. You do some incredible work, man. Um, providing not just hope but inspiration and humor and entertainment to a lot of communities. Um, and it's it's always it's been a pleasure to connect with you, man. I'm uh, yeah. I look forward to the next time. I know this won't be the last time. Also, you need to get get out to Austin, or we'll get out to New York at some point. But, uh, yeah, I definitely want to come to Austin. There, there's uh, a lot going on there that that I want to check out. You know, the, I'll I'll put it on with, the podcast so your wifey can can hold you to it. We'll take you to wine country. Yeah, take me to wine country, and I I know like the comedy scene is is blowing up in Austin, and I I want to check out some of that too. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, there's a lot of reasons. It's a barbecue too, for sure. Oh, <laughs> My barbecue. I'm pretty oh, good. okay. But, um, yeah, dude, count Lance, me in. Lance, you want to tell people where they can find you and how they can follow and tune into your awesome podcast as well and your social media stuff? Yeah. Uh, so the for social media, it's real simple. I have one handle across everything it, it's at C through pod, S E E T H R O U G H P O D. I think I spelled it right. Every time I do that, I'm like, did I spell it right? I think. Uh, um, and uh, there's also seethroughpod.com is my website, and that's links to everything on there. Uh, with links to my episodes, social media, some press I've done, how to uh, my email address and all that. Um, but the best way you can support me is just go on YouTube and type in the See Through Podcast, you know, and, and watch an episode, subscribe to my channel. Uh, Luke's episode will be out soon. So, uh, keep an eye out for that and, uh, yeah, follow along on, uh, this, this podcasting journey I'm going on 